Thank you for joining us here in the Skyline Lincoln. We have three Skyline 8S development vehicles, but this particular car is special to us because it's the first vehicle we have that is fully autonomous. Here at 2017 CES, Newsoft Automotives is working with Renesis to show a live demonstration of our 8S algorithms on the H3 platform. One of our companies that we work with is LiderTech and Trilumina, and they've partnered together to work on a solid state LiDAR. Over here, it is showing the range it's got and how it can track objects. The great thing about this is it has no moving parts. But when it gets integrated into um, a vehicle, the idea is, is that it will go into a component that almost looks like a fog light or a blinker. The University of Waterloo is special because of our tremendous student talent. We also have research programs in software and electrical and computer engineering and mechatronics. And these are the disciplines that are absolutely necessary today for self-driving cars. What we can see here is a live demonstration of a radar unit along with a LiDAR unit being displayed on our PolySync software. The light blue bubbles that you see on the screen are coming from the radar and the small red dots are coming from the LiDAR sensor. All of this data is being processed by the RCAR H3 running the QNX real-time operating system. And what we've done is we've routed all of that sensor data into very powerful Renesis SOCs located in the trunk. Now using these SOCs, we can actually run autonomous driving applications such as sensor fusion, a lane and pedestrian detection, even surround view applications, including V2X. We have connected a camera car with up to eight cameras, four cameras for surround view, three cameras for mirror replacement, and one camera supposed to be for driver monitoring. Not only that, uh, but we've also added to this vehicle a driver monitor camera with facial recognition. So if you see the red dots of my eyeballs, even, even with glasses, I can actually do eye tracking, uh, face tracking, gesturing, so we can actually have uh, interaction with both uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Here we can take a look at the hardware that's bringing this autonomous driving system to life. We have two of our autonomous driving development kits. Right. right now we have each of these kits running at about 15 watts of processing power. The reason we decided to use two is because we wanted to go beyond ASIL D for this processing concept. We actually want to take it to ASIL D with fail operation. And the reason is, is that in this car right now we want to research you know, what the requirements are for an SAE level 4 autonomous vehicle where the driver is not required to take over in the event of a hardware failure. 